everyone took advantage of the transport. We got back to Kodima and spent the next few days wandering around the city again. During this time, we met a French couple that had been touring by bike for three years down into Africa and now, after flying over Pakistan, have been transversing the northern areas of India. Given the traffic and road conditions, I find it remarkable that I have come so far. Of course, there are many bicyclists that are now traveling worldwide. Not only have they been traveling for three years, they have only purchased one bottle of water. They drink local water in most cases, with little instance of illness. We had a chai with them in the cafe where we found them after spotting their bicycles and after a short conversation went further up the hill to sit in the forest. We were fortunate to make a friend in Koima through the friend of a friend and the day before leaving the area this young man, a journalist for a local newspaper, came to visit us. I was grateful to meet someone in the area that was our own age and friendly enough to treat us as more than common tourists. Who, of course, we were eager at first to know more about the interesting foods for sale in the local markets. He was eager to cook these for us, and we went to the market in search of silkworms. Unfortunately, these were far too expensive, so we settled instead for frogs, snails, and local rice wine. After gathering the ingredients for dinner, he took us to his home. It was a nice house he shared with his siblings. Inside, there were a few rooms with beds, and outside there was a kitchen where we sat as he and his friend prepared dinner. First, each of the snails were scrubbed with a rough sponge, given a smack on the end of the shell with a spoon, and put into salt water. They were boiled with a piece of ham and thick gravy. Once this was put on to boil, the living frogs, which come in plastic bags, were each hit upon the head, being held by their back legs. Then, upon a small metal grate, they were roasted over the fire briefly. Some of the frogs jerked and moved about during this step, and some were given another smack on the head. After roasting, they had their entrails removed through their mouths, and they were fried with some seasonings. Our new friend was getting excited for the meal. It had been some time since he had last had these local delicacies. I was excited to try these new foods, even though my stomach was making me very uneasy. The smell of snails in the pressure cooker was a bit much for me, and I went outside to get a breath of fresh air. Just up the street, the neighbor was carving bowls from blocks of wood. He invited us in and showed us a few sculptures that he had completed. After some time, after some time, dinner was prepared, and we sat with our new friends and were taught how to eat the snails. First, you suck from the hole at the top of the shell until you feel the snail break loose. Then, suck from the bottom until the snail comes into your mouth. I was just mentioning that these kinds of snails give live birth when... I started noticing crunchy little bits accompanying the adult snail. Most of the snails were full of smaller snails. At first I found the infant snails undesirable, but our friend mentioned that he enjoyed them. I decided to view them as a treat more so than unexpected crunches and found them not so bad. The frogs we ate, head and all, and they too were quite nice. However, my sore stomach was still causing me a lot of trouble. Our friend asked why we would not eat more of the home-cooked snacks. We told him that our stomachs had been very unwell lately, but he was obviously saddened by our lack of appetite. I ate as much as my stomach would let me, hoping he would understand how grateful I was for the meal. I asked how old people were when the sucking the snails becomes something that people giggle about. He said that in their own language, there's a phrase that translates to, I snailed a girl. He said that some people never come to like the snails and that others never learn to eat them properly by sucking on either side. And sometimes you can get a stubborn snail and accidentally inhale the fleshy morsel. We began to note the many animals that make up the diet of the Nagas. And our friend told us jokingly that when the Nagas watch Animal Planet, or Planet Earth, they spend the duration of the show determining which animals would be good to eat and which would not. The only discrimination is based on taste or edibility. Of course, the topic of headhunting came up. The consensus was that this is just a form of war, and like any other, has traits of savagery. A friend noted colonization after exposure to opium, and that many youths are now beginning to question the widespread religious views in the area. He then asked if we believed in dinosaurs. I told him that I most definitely do, that I have seen their bones in museums, and that they were massive animals that ruled the earth far before our own time. He was reluctant to believe me, I think. He told us that the Westerners here convinced the natives of the idea of poverty and wealth. The village people were told that they were poor and that they needed to obtain wealth. They said 
the beetle knot is common because people were too poor to offer food to visitors. What truth this contains, I am unsure. The next day we left to Guwahati again. Our visa would soon be ending and we must go to Sri Lanka to apply for another. This time in Guwahati we paid to go into a small park and spent some time watching local teenagers take selfies. It was incredible to see the number of people and amount of time spent on selfies. The amount of influence the Western world has on India is saddening in my eyes. Here is one of the oldest cultures in the world that has again and again been brutalized by the so-called developing world and they cling to the idea that they must become like America or Australia. Many people are driven by what they see in movies and on television, often thinking a fancy vehicle or expensive clothes will bring them the happiness that they see in such bizarre representations. The developed world must take responsibility to honor differences and not push everyone into playing the game of money. Wealth is an invented concept to control others. Money, possession, clothes do not bring satisfaction or happiness. Abundance of food, kindness among people, small beloved homes are the true treasures of life in my eyes. India, do not idolize the civilizations that have conquered the world and live on with no idea of culture or community. I understand that seeing the Western world through phones gives an idea of something greater. Of course, travel is something that many Indians will never have the opportunity to take part in. Local tourism has just recently began developing. Well, I can understand the desire for people to obtain the same ability to see the world as others. It is the crippling inferiority complex instilled in the youth of India that I am most saddened to see. Even as I, a privileged white Westerner, am remarking on these issues, the more paradoxical and hopeless elements of this issue become apparent. The conquerors now complain of the inconsistencies that they themselves have created, in order to help India, the false ideas of wealth and poverty that the Western colonists have instilled must be slowly disentangled from future generations of all populations. The only reason the Western world can consider themselves wealthy is because the imaginary lines that we have drawn called borders. The only reason that wealth accumulates on one side of the line and poverty runs rampant on the other is our own stockpiling of goods at the expense of workers that live in slave-like conditions. Our friend from Kerala took us to a temple. On the way, we began to see many monkeys. They started to follow us as we were carrying food at the time. Our friend taught us that all you must do is pick up a rock to show them that they are unwelcome to the treats. The temple itself is a building with concentric circles stacked on top of each other, each reaching into the sky. It was not very big overall. At the entrance, you take off your shoes. Then there are several bells hung that you can ring to invoke deities. I did not go past this point because I was unsure of what one does in such a place as this. I had no prayer or, or understanding of what things would be found inside. We waited outside of the temple while our friend went within. We packed our things and waited anxiously for the taxi. We had once again allowed ourselves to run late for the plane. The taxi never arrived and we found a tuk-tuk driver down the road and told him we were in a hurry. The traffic was not easy to navigate and the driver was not as reckless as some that I have seen. We arrived at the airport in a frazzled state. The guard at the door asked for our tickets and our passports. He looked at the tickets long and hard, then at us both, then back at the tickets. Your flight is tomorrow, he said. We walked away laughing. We thought we were going to miss the flight, but it actually arrived a day too early. The next day we left for Kolkata, then left Kolkata for Sri Lanka.